everybody, it's Sam at Moose.Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun, faceted origami gift box. Now, in true mixed up craft style, I have made this my own. So I got the inspiration from Origami Folds on YouTube, and I'll share the link to um, that video. But I have changed this up, I think, quite a bit. I have made these so that they're exposed. These are actually folded inside, but I liked them on the outside. I've added eyelets and I've changed the way it's decorated because like a lot of origami it's used, um, origami is made using the 6x6 paper so it's very very thin paper to allow all the intricate folding which is what origami is all about so you can't always transfer a lot of the origami over to cardstock and I didn't know whether this was going to work or not but it's turned out really well. This is using really thick um, cardstock which I'll show you, the ones that I use um, and then this paper here is the Floral Fusion by First Edition, which is their Oriental collection. And I thought, because this is an origami, it's an Oriental fold, I'm going to go with Oriental papers as well. And I'm going to continue that in a minute. So that's using one sheet of 12 by 12. This is more, I guess, of the original kind of way it's to look. That's using one piece of 6 by 6 And that's with the folds folded inwards. So these pieces here that are flapping go inside. So I'm going to show you, it's very simple whether you want it outside or not, but you can see the difference that you get there. And that's using one piece of 6x6. Six six. That will hold a small little suite, a singular suite, a piece of jewellery very nicely. will go in there wrapped in a little bit of tissue. Um, these make really, really cute little favours. So that's 6x6, six six, that's 12x12. 12 12. I'm going to make it with 10x10 10 10 today. But let me just show you what it's like inside. So... If I just take the ribbon across there, there's a good way to fold, to tie your ribbon as well, which I'll show you. But I've got three little treats in here. And then you can see the bottom there I've decorated as well. So where those pieces, what I've done, sorry, I've, these pieces are sticking out. But I've also taken away the bulk inside here as well. So, like I said, the normal origami one, they, they show you, they just fold it and it's just a fun kind of little box. But you can't, realistically, you can't actually get anything in it. So I have uh, found a way, I think, and I, I love it and I hope you all do, <clears throat> excuse me, like it too, that works so that we can hold and, you know, use it as a nice little gift box. So I'm just going to shovel that to one side because that is ready to give to somebody. And let me bring in the 10 by 10 so I've also done a template just to show you the folds that we're going to be doing. So again, don't be, you know, don't look at this and think, oh my God, look at it all. It's really, really straightforward. But I just, this is going to be easy for me to revert to when I'm talking you through the bits that we're doing. So I'm going to keep that to one side like so. So that's the paper pack, Floral Fusion. It's an older one now. It's been out for some time. You can still get it and it is beautiful. It's an, it, I, I always say that Paradise Crush is my favourite, but actually Floral Fusion is a close favourite. I mean, just look. And these are, you can see the shine on them there. Really, really lovely. And again, I'll share all the links to where you can get that from. Double-sided, really good quality. Um, and that's what I'm using to decorate. So for this one, I'm going for like this kind of deep red. And that's the paper I've pulled out there. And it's got this beautiful, like repeated pattern. Um which I think is just going to look really, really pretty. So I'll talk you through all of that sizing in a minute. For the, for the main bit, let's just crack on and get this done. Now, you can do this box in any size you want, as long as it's an equal-sided square piece of cardstock that you're using. Okay, any size, it's got to be equal. Once you see how I do it, you can crack on then. And I'll leave the measurements for the 12x12, 12 12. I'll leave the measurements for the 6x6 by, 6 by 6 in my blog, and obviously the 10x10, 10 10. but 8x8, 8 8. you can either go 2x2, 2 2. I mean that would be really, really tiny, and if you're very, you know, patient, um, then go for it. So, what you want to do first of all here, is along your, whatever side you've got, so this is 10 inches, you want to do your halfway mark first. Now, you'll do other score lines, but I'm talking you through the way that you is easiest to do for you to use any size you want. So whatever length you've got here, find the halfway and score. So in this case it's 10, so we're going to score it 5. Then you want the halfway of 5, which is 2.5, and, and again halfway between 5 and 10 is 7.5. So using a 10 inch side you will actually be scoring at 2.5, 5 and 7.5. And Rotate the card and do exactly the same again. So 2.5, five and seven and a half. So now you will have 16 squares on this piece of paper. 
Now those 16 squares are these here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. No matter what size card you have, you have to have the 16 squares. Okay? So let's just give you another one. So if you're using a 9 inch piece, you'll find the halfway, which will be 4 and a half, and then you'll do half of 4 and a half, which is 2 and a quarter. That's another example, and then half again there. Okay, so hopefully this is making sense. So that's all the scoring you need with the scoreboard. So now what we're going to be creating, so I'm going to now turn this that way. I'm going to turn my card that way as well. Okay, and we're now going to create this line going right through the middle here. Okay, so I'm going to turn my card over because we want to keep our score lines all in the same um, orientation. So you want to make sure, key thing with origami is your points. Make sure all your points really line up. And then go in and obviously you need to really work this more and burnish it. So we've just created this score line here. So if I open that up, this is this one that we've got now. So then rotate again, it's exactly the same, and do the same again. So right up to the corner there, make sure it's all perfect. And again, score. Like so. Okay. So now you'll see we've got this cross here, like we've got here. Next, we want to create this line here and this line here. And in order to do that, you're going to take your point and you're going to match it up to the, the square below. So there's that square there. This is this square here. We're bringing this point across to there. Okay, so just below the diamond shape there, you want to go to this point here. So bring it up and pop it in there. So again, it should all sit within the squares that we made at the beginning, those 16 squares. You just want to be lining up your sides all with that. Okay, then flip it round again and do the same. So bringing it up to this one here. Like so. Then rotate it and do the same again. Okay, and then rotate the whole thing. Once you remember this, it's very quick. I mean, I whizzed through the 12 by 12. It didn't take me long at all. So now, can you see, we have, we've recreated all of those lines here. We've recreated here. Now, the ones we've got left to do are these tiny ones at the top. So if you see there, all I've got is this and just know there needs to be a line across there. Okay, so to do this one, all you've got to do is bring the corner and fold it within its square. Okay, so if I show you here, you're just bringing it across just into that piece. So it's all within the square, just over there. So again, bring it over and just burnish. Leave those ones in, don't pull them back out because they're actually going to stay in that position. So that folding that I've just done is going to be the same for every single size that you have as long as it's an equal sided square. Okay, there's no measurement, you know, measuring or anything involved. It's just folding in half. Uh, sorry, it's folding that way, that way, then that way, that way. It's just folds. But as long as you've got those 16 squares to start at the beginning, okay, then you will have it. So now we've got this. So I'm going to get rid of the template now because we don't need that anymore. And what you want to do is where you've got, so we've got this piece folded over we've got a square, then you've got these triangles here. Just bring in the triangles inwards and just kind of pop it on its side. And you can just burnish that there. So we're going to start bringing it into the shape that it's going to naturally come up to, okay? And this is the bit that we're actually going to cut away. Now, if you imagine, once it all comes in even more, so in fact, we need to burnish all of our score lines. That's what I forgot to do. So take them out and you do need to burnish the original, very, very original straight score lines that we done. That made the 16 squares. It was just easier to do all that other folding 
whilst they're um, not burnished. Okay, there we go. And then just fold those back in and then we'll back up there. Now if you imagine you've got that on all four of your corners, you can hardly get anything in the box at the end of it. So um, we end up cutting that all away. But just go around to each of those bigger triangles and fold them inside. And you should have, everything should join nicely on the side there. Again. So all we're doing at the moment is just kind of getting our folds where they need to be. Now where we've folded the triangle over, you want to fold, bring that bit down. Okay, so that's the back of it. That's the triangle folded over. Bring it in so that these two come together. Okay, so there's the top left and right of the square. You're bringing them so they touch at the top here. Okay, and again, pop it on its side. Just burnish in those lines. And this is the one with the little triangle that's folded over. So now, if I bring that all over, there is your box. Okay, but you can get hardly anything in it because look at all the stuff that's inside. There's just so much card inside it, um, and I just thought it's such a great size. It sh we should be able to fill it more. So, okay. So what we want to do next is stick down. Let's decorate the inside because that's going to be easy once it's open. This is optional. Let me tell you what size you need because obviously I haven't done the 10 by 10 yet. So flatten it out. So this is a three and a half inch square inside. So I'm going to cut a piece of three and a quarter by three and a quarter. Okay, so, so there is my one to go in the middle. Now you can also add to this another maybe white piece of card and you could have a little message on there, you know, or a little happy birthday or whatever you want. Um, I think it would look really nice. But that can now be stuck in the middle. Okay, so that's now all stuck down. And again, it just all, because we've already folded everything in the direction it should, it just all folds nicely. Next, we want to start removing some bulk, but first of all, we need to stick the sides down to then cut into it afterwards. So, um, these larger triangles, so not the triangles where you folded over that piece, it's these bigger ones, okay? So along here, these large triangles there and there, we need to stick together, all right? Just remember, it's not the ones with the piece folded over, it's the other ones. So, turn it over and just you want to make sure you get the glue right up to the edges because that's what's going to actually end up holding it together because we're going to cut away the rest but it's easier to just stick the whole thing together first and then bring it across and then flatten one side onto any of the sides inside so you can squeeze it together and make sure it's a really nice join and this is basically this side here where we're going to be attaching our eyelet so that's what I'm creating here once we stick our um, decorative paper on top so just again making sure see the glue's coming up through there which is good because then I know that I've got a really nice join because like I said this is going to stay and we're going to end up cutting away that piece there and even about a quarter of an inch and that's it so that's that one and then go around to the next big section and again glue that so to go and get those four all stuck down Okay, so now what you will have, if I just straighten it all out, is you'll have a square or a cube, okay? And obviously these bits just naturally want to all fold in. These bits should go out, so you should have a point on the side, you can see here, then four points inside. So yeah, it's the easiest way to, where you, to tell you where you need to be at this point. You should have these four points, four points inside, and then these four side points outside, and then you will have that shape. So again, when you push them together, you've got it, okay? So now, with those, I've got some still sticking. I'm just gonna open up the box again and basically pick one of them. All right, it's gonna be hard for me to show you here, but there it is, okay? Just make sure I get the light. So this piece here. So with my scissors, 
I'm going to go in and cut as far in as you can get your scissors really. Obviously, I don't know, if you've got some super thin something I've never seen before and it goes right to the edge, then don't, because you do need to leave a little bit. There you go, I've just cut that out. And if I bring it up, you can see there, it's about a quarter of an inch tab, and that's what's keeping that joined together. Again, there you go, you can just see it in there. Okay, so again, grab another one. There we go. So I mean, looking at my triangles that I've cut out, you can see they're a little bit, they're all the, roughly the same size, so that's good. But that one there's gone a bit crooked and, you know, don't worry. It's, it's you know, you're not gonna be able to get that perfect because of the way that it is. But now, if you look at the room, we've just created so much space. Because when that goes in, you've still got this, that's the kind of height that you've got. So it's about one and a half in terms of height in there. But yeah, it just gives you so much more room by doing that. So now we need to decorate the all the triangles. So first of all, I'm going to bring in another piece of this. So when you go to decorate on any size that you're doing, so we're not, well I'm not, going to be putting anything on these small triangles that all go inside because you don't see it. What I'm going to be decorating first are these larger ones here. Now when you put it that way, it's actually just a square. Okay, if I bring it out flat, there it is, it's just a square. So whatever size you're doing, all you want to do is measure the square. So in this case, it's a two and a half inch square. So now I'm going to cut a two and a quarter inch square. I always like a one eighth of an inch border. So you need to do four because you've got four squares on the side. So I'm going to cut this now. So I've got four two and a quarter inch squares. Okay, so I've got my four two and a quarter squared. And then you want to cut them in half again so you want to this time pop them on a diagonal so they're in a, di a diamond shape and then pop it in and you just want to make sure that your points are lined up in your trimmer and then you will have these two let's get that one stuck there there we go like so and now if i come in here they fit perfectly giving you that lovely little border. And it's not until it's all together that you'll really appreciate the border that's in between them because it will then really make that pattern paper pop like here. You can really see it stand out. Okay, so I'm gonna go and do that on all four of my squares and get them all stuck down. Okay, so there is it all covered. All right, it looks really good. See what I mean with the border you get the red lines through there it really defines the box and shows all the sides nicely now that re now this one looks just like this one okay everything folded in but I prefer it open it up and then all these pieces put them outwards and then you get that look and I love that look I think it looks really good and I like the the, the kind of blank red against the pattern and I'm not actually going to decorate the bottom here if you do want to decorate these ones just like I've done here all you've got to do is cut two more of those size squares that I told you before. Cut them in half again like this, but then cut those halves in half again. And then they will go in the two smaller triangles down there. Okay, so it's really easy to do. Um, so next, the hole punching. So whether you've got eyelets or not, with these bits here that we've got inside, just push them to the side that they want to kind of go. And then I'm coming about half an inch down and I am putting my hole right on the join. Okay, so it's right in the middle, like so. You can see that I've got my hole. And then that's ready if you're gonna put your ribbon through. But I just, again, I said I'm going through a phase. And I've just got tons and tons of these eyelets. So I'm going to, I've got some red ones there actually. I think that's the right red. No, it's a bit of a brownie red, I don't want that one. I think I'm gonna go with the gold still. I like the gold, the golden red will look nice. And then I'm just going to pop that through, like so, pops in. You can see that it just looks really finished. And this kind of really, again, just holds your box together. It's, it, it snaps that join into place so that, you know it's not going to come, across, come apart at all. So there you go. So I've got that one there. So I'm going to go and do that on all of the four sides. But again, if you don't have the eyelets, then you just want a hole punch just on those four sides. Okay, so now you can see if I bring that up how it just is beautiful like I said I think this is a, a now a favorite I absolutely adore this box um, so pop in your treats whatever gifts you're given I've got some ribbon here now the easiest way that I find and the nicest way to do this to seal it up is 
pop your ribbon in and then go to the opposite side. So I've gone in this side, I'm going to then go through this side here. Okay. Bring them together. See the other ones want to come in there as well. In fact, I'll leave that one out a little bit. So bring them together and then just don't tie them in a knot, but twist it round like so. So I'll bring them tighter together. But I'm just crisscrossing and then one I want to put then through this side. Like so, and one through this side. And that way you get all your ribbon inside, like so, so it's all concealed. It doesn't take away from the box itself. And then just tie in a nice bow. Okay, there you go. Do it that way with that ribbon. So it's just, you know, ready for a gift tag on there or just like that. I mean, that's gonna look ooh, gorgeous under the tree. So these are definitely going under my Christmas tree. I can't wait to make some Christmas themed ones, but I adore that. I think it really shows all the sides. That's what faceted means. It's an object with many sides. Um, and I just absolutely adore it. You could put something on the bottom there. In fact, you could have a little message or something underneath there. So that is the 10 by 10. There's the 12 by 12. So again, you can get a, a good kind of idea there of the sizes. So the 12 by 12, base is um, four and a quarter, 10 by 10 base is uh, three and a half, and then this dinky little one, folded in that way, is uh, two and one eighth of an inch. So hopefully it all makes sense. You know now how you can make it in any size that you want. Um, I will have all those measurements of these ones today on my blog along with that template as well that I showed you. But please to give it a go and please share it on my Facebook group because I would love to see it, or Facebook page even. Um, you know I love to see what you create. So I hope you've enjoyed today. Please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.